We just added a bundle extension over here, floating one very specific kind of JSON, this string astronaut dictionary. But now I want to load missions.json. This thing contains missions and it's different. It's different kind of JSON. You can see immediately it's an array of stuff. Each mission inside there has an ID number plus description down here. Again, borrowed from Wikipedia. If you're going to use it, please credit them. We have as well an array of crew inside here. So Grissom, White and Chaffee with a uh, command pilot, senior pilot and pilot. And of this data, it almost entirely has a launch date when these things took off. So here's uh, Apollo 8, 9, 10, and then 11 down here, uh, apart from, sadly, uh, Apollo 1, which has no launch date because uh, during a launch rehearsal, there's a cabin crew fire, and sadly, the command module uh, caught fire and, and killed the crew. I want to convert this to code, and this means storing our crew roles somehow, name and role, but also individual missions. So let's start off making a new Swift file called mission.swift. I'll move that up next to astronaut.swift, keep my brain organized. And I'll say inside here we have a struct, struct even, called crew role, which is codable. Has a name string, string, and a role string. As for the missions, this is going to contain an ID integer, an array of those crew roles, and the description string. But what about the launch date? Because we might have one, but we might also not have one. So what should that be? Well, think about it. How does Swift represent the maybe has, maybe doesn't have elsewhere? How do we store might be a string, might be nothing at all? And I hope you're thinking already, the answer's clear, we use optionals. Optionals means might be there, might not be there. And in the case of codable, if we mark a property as being optional, it'll automatically skip over it if it's missing in the JSON. So we'll add a second struct here called mission, which is codable and identifiable so we can loop over them. We'll say it has an ID int and a launch date optional string, might be, might not be. Let crew will be a crew role array and the description string. Now, before we look at how we want to load our JSON into that, I want to show off one small extra thing. Uh, this crew role struct here was made specifically to hold data about crew roles on missions. And as a result, we can put this inside the mission struct. This is called a nested struct, and it's simply one struct crew role inside another struct. And this won't affect our code in the project, but elsewhere it's useful just to help keep your code organized a bit more. Rather than saying just crew role by itself, self even, you would say mission.crew role to be clear which one you mean. If you can imagine a, a large project with, with hundreds of custom types, this kind of organization really, really helps keep things clear. Anyway, now let's think about how we can load our missions JSON file because we already have a bundle extension that can decode JSON into a dictionary that string the keys and astronauts of values. And we could very easily copy and paste that. Adding a new decode file method that decodes into an array of missions, for example. But there's a better solution because we can leverage Swift's generics system, which is an advanced feature we touched on briefly, very briefly in, in project three. They allow us to write code that's capable of working with a variety of different data types. And in this project, we wrote our bundle extension here to work with, with this dictionary of astronauts, right? That's what it's doing. But really we want to be able to handle dictionaries of astronauts, arrays of missions, or potentially lots of other kinds of things. We want to be more flexible. Now to make this thing generic, we want to give it a placeholder for certain types. This is written angle brackets right here after the method name but before its parameters like this. Angle brackets T. Now we can use anything we want for the placeholder. It's just a placeholder. We could have written type or type of thing or even fish. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's just a little placeholder. T is a convention in coding, meaning 
a type, an unknown type. So you'll see T used a lot. If you've got multiple, you might see T in U, but T by itself is very common. And now, everywhere we want to refer to the placeholder type we're working with, the kind of thing we want to decode, we can just say T. So here we're returning a string astronaut dictionary. We're going to make this thing return any kind of decodable data. So we'll say it will return a T. Whatever that T might be, we don't know, but it'll return one. Now be careful, there's a difference between array of T and just T. You know, we had asked before for a string astronaut dictionary, right? So if T was the string astronaut dictionary, boom, it's the same thing, writing T and that. But if we try to write array of T, we're basically saying we'd like an array of dictionaries of string astronauts, which is completely wrong. Please don't do that. You want to return a simple T like that. Now, towards the end of the decode method down here, there's another place where string astronaut is used, right here. And again, we want to decode T. Whatever type we're working with, that's the one we want to decode. Might be a string astronaut dictionary, might be an array of missions, might be who knows what. Decode one of those, please. So we want to say t.self. So now what we've said is decode will be used with some kind of type. Might be a string astronaut dictionary, who knows what. And it should attempt to decode that down here from the JSON we gave it. Now you can see Xcode's flagging up a big warning here saying instance method decode from requires that T conform to decodable. What it means is we've just said some kind of type will come in. It could be anything at all. It could be a dictionary of ast astronauts, it could be an array of missions or an array of something else entirely. Something that Swift cannot decode. And so Swift can't be sure the type we're working with will definitely conform to the codable protocol. So rather than take a risk, it might work, might not work, it's saying, no, I refuse to build your code. I cannot be certain the data you're asking for can be decoded. Fortunately, we can fix this with a constraint. We can tell Swift that this T here can be whatever we want, as long as that thing we choose it is conforms to the codable protocol. That way Swift knows it's always safe to use and it'll make sure we don't try and use it with a type that does not conform to codable. So we'll say decode a T, a something, but that something must colon conform to the codable protocol. And now the error there goes away, but we'll get a different error as you'll see over here. Generic parameter T could not be inferred <laughs> what this mean, this, this means, and this worked fine before, by the way, this code is absolutely fine. There's been an important change, right? The decode method before would always return a string astronaut dictionary. So Swift knew the astronaut's property would have a type, a string astronaut dictionary. That's what it means. But now it could be anything that conforms to decodable. Now we still know the file's the same, the JSON hasn't changed, it'll still become an astronaut dictionary, right? That has not changed. But Swift does not know that. Our problem is that Deco can return any kind of data that conforms to codable, but Swift needs more information. It wants to know exactly what it expects to be used with. So astronauts can be made the right type. So to fix this, we're gonna add a type annotation to astronauts to say exactly what it's gotta be. Astronauts is a string astronaut dictionary like that. And finally, it works. Our code still works. Now that sounds like we just wasted a lot of time, but here's the trick. We can now load mission.json as well. We can say, let missions be an array of mission equal to bundle.main.decode missions.json. And because our mission struct conforms to codable, arrays of missions, arrays of missions conform to codable too. And therefore, we can use that same bundle extension to load an array of missions. And that's the power of generics. We can use the same generic decode method to load any JSON 
from our bundle into any Swift type that conforms to Codable. We haven't got to have a dozen variants to handle different kinds of information. Very, very useful. And you'll find that code you've written right now will be useful in many, many projects to come for years. It's really, really helpful. Now, before we're done, there is one last little thing I want to point out to you. We saw an error earlier uh, down here. If I remove the codable conformance, um, it's, it, the error we saw was the method decode requires that T conform to decodable. Right, that was the error. And we've been using the word codable everywhere. So in our uh, constraint here, we use codable. And when we used mission, or, uh, we, or astronauts, sorry, we use codable. And mission, we use codable. Why is the error saying decodable? Behind the scenes, this codable thing, if you jump the definition in Xcode, is actually just a little type alias. It means I am decodable and encodable. These are two individual protocols, can be decoded, can be encoded. And together, can be coded. <laughs> it can be codable, added and uh, decoded and encoded together. Uh, and this means it's possible for us to say, actually, uh, this particular thing can be uh, loaded from JSON into Swift structs, but not put back into JSON, and vice versa with the encodable protocol here. So you can use both by saying codable, use only one saying decodable, it's down to you.